Hello everyone, welcome again. Today's lesson will be focusing on the chemical earth module of year 11 chemistry. And in this series, we'll be looking at analyzing mixtures. So we've talked about in previous lessons what elements, compounds, and mixtures are. And in this set of, of um, lessons, we'll be talking about how do we analyze these chemical mixtures as well as chemical compounds and um, mixtures of chemical compounds as well. Okay. So today's lesson will be a focus on gravimetric analysis. So in chemistry, we have lots of different types of analysis methods. And one of the most important ones is this gravimetric analysis. And it's, you know, you can hear it from the word, it's gravimetric, so it's sort of relating to gravity. So what that means is that this will probably have something to do with weight or mass. So gravimetric analysis usually has a focus on getting a mass quantity out. Okay. So in terms of chemical analysis as a whole, we want to sort of determine the composition of a sample, and that's what we call chemical analysis. Okay. So when we are looking to figure out what's inside this substance, that's when we talk about chemical analysis. Now, in chemistry, we can either have a quantitative analysis or a qualitative analysis. Okay. So qualitative, it's sort of the first part is relating to quality. So, you know, this particular slide is good or this particular slide is bad. They're not numerical, okay? So qualities are something that you can't place a value on. And so qualitative analysis, you don't assign values to what you get out. So for instance, if I heated something up and it changed color, the color change maybe went from red to blue. Now, I can't assign a, a number to that change, so it would be a qualitative assessment or a qualitative observation. Okay, so it changed from red to blue. Okay, that's qualitative because there's no number associated with that. So qualitative analysis involves simply determining what's in the sample. Okay, so if I had a chemical and I realized that it was carbon and oxygen, that's qualitative because there's no number assigned to it. We just know that there's carbon in there and there's oxygen in there. See, so there are no numerical values assigned, okay? Now quantitative, so quantitative sort of sounds like quantity, and quantities are numbers. I can have three apples or I can have 20 apples. They're quantities of apples, right? So in quantitative analysis, what we're looking for is how much of a particular chemical is in a sample, okay? So if I took a beaker of some chemical and I found out that there was five grams of calcium in there, then that would be a quantitative measure or a quantitative analysis of that sample. Okay, So quantitative, quantity, numbers, qualitative is like quality and so there are no numbers. Okay, And in quantitative analysis we can actually split that into two more subgroups. So within quantitative analysis we have gravimetric analysis and volumetric analysis. Okay. And I'll go through what they are in a second, but remember that it's, so there's quantitative and qualitative, and then inside quantitative there's two more, which is gravimetric and volumetric. So gravimetric analysis is the measurement of mass. Okay, So if we took a sample and weighed it out, or did something, did, performed a chemical reaction and weighed the products, that would be a gravimetric analysis. Whereas volumetric analysis is the measure of solution volumes. So for instance, if I had an acid and I mixed it with a base and I knew what the volumes of acids and bases were, then that would be, and then I got something out, that would be a volumetric analysis, okay? And you can have sort of mixtures of the two where you use a volumetric analysis to sort of work out a mass, but um, volumetric analysis is simply looking at volumes of solutions, okay? So salt waters or any sort of solution that you can think of. Yeah, so that's the major difference. Gravimetric mass, volumetric volume. Okay. So now we look at gravimetric analysis. And this involves accurately, and here's a key word, accurately measuring the masses of a particular substance. So we use this uh, a lot in different industries, particularly the pharmaceutical industry, the food industry, and the mining industry. And you can see here that each of these really needs to know how much mass it is. For instance, if you're a miner and you promised some company you know, 2,000 tonnes of iron and you only could produce you know, 1,000, 
then they're not going to be very happy. And in the pharmaceutical industry, this is even more important because if your tablet says, you know, 200 grams of drug X and it's actually like 600 grams, then you've probably, you know, inadvertently killed someone if you didn't get this right. So in gravimet gravimetric analysis is super important in these industries um, for economic and even safety reasons, okay? Now, what will happen most of the time in gravimetric analysis for chemistry is that you'll make a precipitate or something, you'll mix two solutions and get a precipitate out, and then you'll weigh the precipitate, that's one common example. Or you'd take the measurement of combustion byproducts and then sort of take those and try and develop a empirical formula for the fuel that you used, okay? So, for instance, if I took a piece of wood and I lit it on fire, or I, I weighed it first and then lit it on fire, then took out all of the byproducts and weighed them, I could actually develop an equation or a formula for the chemical composition of wood based on my byproducts of combustion. So those are the two typical ones that you'll see. Weighing precipitates, which we'll cover a lot in year 12, and you know developing empirical formulas for complex fuels using combustion. Okay. So that concludes today's lesson on gravimetric analysis. We looked at what gravimetric analysis is and what chemical analysis is as a whole and what are the different subgroups of chemical analysis. So we move on to the question segment now and see if we can answer some questions. So which of the following is correct about chemical analysis? Okay, so chemical analysis involves what is present in a sample. Yes, that's true. Chemical analysis is all about finding out what's inside a particular sample. B, chemical analysis involves how much of a particular chemical is in a sample. Yes, that's a sub-branch of chemical analysis. We can actually work out how much of a type of chemical will be in a sample. So that's also part of chemical analysis. Chemical analysis involves only quantitative analysis. That's not true um, because it involves qualitative analysis as well. So we'll hold on to this one and see if the last one is more correct. Quantitative analysis includes gravimetric and volumetric analyses. So that's also true. So C is the incorrect one, and it's our answer. Okay. So copper sulfate crystal contains water. So when you have a crystal of copper sulfate, there's actually water inside that, that crystal um, bonded with the copper sulfate. And when the crystal is heated, water is removed. Okay. So when we heat the crystal, we actually emit water. Okay, so within the crystal of copper sulfate, that blue crystal, there's water. And when you heat that crystal, it emits water, which gives you, you know, just copper sulfate. So 5.2 grams of copper sulfate is heated to completely remove the water, and the remaining mass was 3.3 grams of white crystal. So the crystal is actually white when there's no water in it. What is the percentage composition of water in hydrated copper sulfate? Okay, so how do we work out the percentage composition? Well, first we need to know what the mass of the water is. Okay, so the mass of copper sulfate is equal to the mass... So we'll, we'll change this from copper sulfate to mass of the crystal because it's a bit easier. Otherwise we'll get confused. So the mass of the blue crystal is equal to the mass of the CuSO4, which is the copper sulfate plus the mass of the water. Okay. Now, if we want the mass of the water, all we have to do is subtract these two. Okay, so we know that there's, this is 3.3, and we know this one is 5.2. So the mass of the water is 1.9. Yes, it's 1.9, okay? Grams. So we now know the mass of the water. Now all we have to do to work out the percentage mass is divide this mass by the total mass of the crystal. So percentage mass and times, a th times 100. So mH2O over m crystal times 100. And that gives us our percentage mass. And if we do the calculation, what we'll find is that the answer is 37%. Okay? So the total mass of the substance 
uh, that the percentage mass of the water is 37%. So 37% of this crystal, copper sulfate, is water. Okay. Explain how volumetric and gravimetric analysis differ. Well, volumetric and gravimetric analysis are both quantitative. So that's not a difference, it's just something that we should understand. They're both quantitative measures of something. So volumetric measurements are by volume. So we actually are measuring a volume of a particular thing. So usually it's a volume of a solution. Whereas gravimetric analysis uh, or gravimetric measurements are done by mass. So we're actually looking for the, the mass of something. Uh, usually we find it by weighing something. Um, there's a little bit of a confusion with physics about that. But basically we're looking for the mass of a particular substance. Whereas in volumetric, we're looking for the volume of a particular substance. So there's sort of two measurements that we can take. They're related, but um, they're not the same. Okay, So that's how they differ. Determine the percentage of carbon in a sample of brown coal, which had an initial mass of 247 grams, and after intense heating to remove all the water and other impurities, finally had a mass of 203.4 grams, and that's we assume is carbon. Okay, so for those who are not aware of the energy industry in Australia, we are mostly or predominantly coal powered in Australia. We all have our electricity comes from coal. Um, and in Victoria, where there's a big supply of brown coal, um, we use a lot of brown coal. Now brown coal is not as good as black coal, because brown coal has a lot of impurities, and particularly it has a lot of water in it. Okay? So black coal is what we want, brown coal is bad. Okay? So here we've taken some brown coal, and it weighed this much, and after we heated it a lot, we got to essentially what is black coal, uh, which is ju just pure carbon and it's this much mass. So we're looking for the percentage composition. So the initial mass is 247 from the question. And the mass of carbon left over is this, also from the question. So the percentage mass of carbon is simply just the mass of carbon divided by the initial mass. And if we multiply by 100, you'll get 82.18%. Okay? So that's how we calculate the percentage mass. So why do mining companies analyze samples of ores before they choose to, to mine a particular location? So we, take an, we basically take what's called a, like a, a core. We dig into the ground and we take out, um, take out a sample and we analyze it to see if what's inside this particular mineral ore. Okay, so why would we want to do that? So if the ore does not contain a high enough percentage of the substance actually wanted, then the mine not be, may not be commercially viable. Okay? So if we realize that our sample has a very low concentration or a low percentage of what we actually want to mine, say iron or copper, then it may not be worthwhile to dig and mine that area because it could cost a lot of money to get very little substance out. So it may not be worthwhile to actually mine this area if we know that the percentage mass of that substance is low. So that's why we, we look for these kind of little tests before we go and invest a lot of money into big mining operations. So that concludes today's lesson on gravimetric analysis. We looked at what a chemical analysis is and how it breaks down into different forms of analysis. And then we took a focus on what gravimetric analysis is and how we um, use it to uh, understand what's inside a particular chemical. So in the future, we'll look at more analysis types and what first-hand investigations you'll actually be able to do in your labs. So I look forward to seeing you at our next lesson.